talk about how to effortlessly navigate wedding inquiries without worrying about getting ghosted, wasting heaps of time on fancy proposals that go nowhere, or investing hours into formal consultations. The goal, my friends, is to make sure you can go from inquiry to booking with the least amount of energy and effort possible. And I wanna walk you through my 10-step process so that you can navigate wedding inquiries like a boss. So, let's just get right into it. Step number one, funnel all of your inquiries to one place. One of the things I used to waste a lot of time on in my business was trying to navigate new client inquiries through all sorts of different platforms. So we would be receiving random emails, we would have phone calls coming in, we'd have Facebook messages, Instagram DMs, as well as the inquiry form that we had set up on our website. And at one point in time, I was handling each one of these different platforms with kind of a slightly different inquiry process. And one thing I wish I had known to do earlier was whenever you get a new client inquiry, literally point them to your online inquiry form and be really explicit and super helpful in terms of the fastest way to get a response is to go through the online inquiry form. I realize now how much energy I wasted in our business because I was trying to do all of these different things when I could have just right from the beginning been like, hey, are you inquiring for a wedding? Here's the link to our online inquiry form. So really take a step back, take a pause and just think about, hey, where in your business do you want to be more explicit in terms of how the customers can interact and engage with you? And once you go through the process of setting up an online inquiry, form, it is to your client's benefit as well as your benefit to just be super explicit in your Instagram bio, in your Instagram stories and captions. You can even set it up on your phone voicemail. You can have an out of office message on your emails so that it's so simple for your clients to know and so easy for them to understand that says, hey, if you're getting married and you wanna submit an inquiry, here's the link to the form. And this will just help simplify your business and your inquiry system so much more. Step number two. Be really strategic with that inquiry form. Your inquiry form is really as much about gathering information from your client about some very functional information like the day that you're getting married and kind of getting a general sense of the scale and scope of what they're looking for. But also be mindful of the fact that that inquiry form is a perfect opportunity for you to vet your potential customers. Because one of the things that I wish that somebody had told me earlier on is that you actually want to use that inquiry form a little bit like a job application to see if the people who you are attracting with your marketing are actually the kinds of customers that you want to be working with. And very specifically, this is an amazing opportunity to vet out or potentially educate your customers in terms of your design aesthetic and how this whole floral design process works and this is the perfect opportunity to start to weed out the people who are not a good fit for professional floristry services. The people who have beer budgets and champagne taste, the people who really should be going down the path of either DIY wedding flowers or finding a different solution other than your premium floral design business. Getting those price shoppers out of the system as early as possible is such a game changer in terms of you using your time more effectively. And this inquiry form that we have created, I absolutely love because it's super simple for the client to fill out because it's mostly drop down boxes and like buttons and we're not actually asking for a huge amount of information or details. It doesn't feel onerous from the client's point of view. And at the same time, it gives us some really valuable information in terms of gauging where they're at in their vision and their dream for the big day, but also really setting the tone in terms of the fact that this is a very collaborative partnership. This isn't a master servant relationship. This is like, we will take that initial vision or some of those ideas that you have, but we're actually gonna make them even better. Step number three in terms of how to navigate wedding inquiries with ease is a simple email response. The number one goal here for you is to respond to the new client inquiry within 48 hours. Faster is even better, but that 48 hour window is so pivotal in terms of building trust with your customers and making it easy for your clients to understand what the next step is in the process. So that email that you're gonna send over to your client after their initial inquiry with you is super simple, there's nothing fancy attached, and it's actually a very functional, straightforward, easy email for you to create. 
And I like to have this as a template email that you can either very simply copy and paste if you're not using any sort of fancy CRM or you've already got it set up in your email templates within your CRM program. So there's three things that you'll want to cover off in this initial response to your client's inquiry. And the first one is outline as simply as possible how the process works. At this point in time, your clients have tried to figure out how to plan wedding florals. No doubt they've come to you with some sort of vision or some sort of idea, but it's so helpful for you to be so simple and so clear in terms of setting the tone for this relationship so that your customers feel empowered and they can feel confident in terms of understanding how the wedding flower planning process actually works. The second thing that I would definitely recommend in this email is your guide to budgeting. This is one of those things that really will help weed out the price shoppers because in many cases, their wish list isn't gonna be anywhere near the budget that they actually need for the big day. But if you can put together a very simple blog post or an easy PDF, or if you can go through the process of setting up an online budget calculator for your customers, it makes it so much easier for your clients to understand what their budget will actually get them. And again, this is one of those resources or tools that we created through trial and error, but absolutely was pivotal in terms of us being able to book clients with way less effort. Because instead of going away and having to create some epically long, crazy proposal only ever to get ghosted, which I did for a really long time, we gave our customers so much more information and power up front that made it so much simpler for them to understand what their budget will get them. And again, this doesn't need to be complicated. This could just be a blog post. This could be something that you keep on your website. This could be a very simple PDF, but just having that resource at your fingertips makes it so much easier for you to just simplify the whole wedding inquiry process. And then the third thing to include in this initial response is a very succinct, easy, summary of what to do next. So it's very helpful for you to tell your clients if after they go through and read all about your design philosophy and the design process and they've read the information in terms of the budgeting resources that you've made available to them, that's when you can tell them, okay, when you're ready to take the next step, all you have to do is this and get very specific and very clear in terms of what you want your customers to do if they've read that whole length of the email. And all three of those things are simply going to be summarized in a very simple, easily laid out email that you're going to send your customer. Step number four, create an online design Q&A. And this is where you can set up a form. It could be something super simple and free, even on Google Forms, where you can get all of the nitty gritty detail, all the questions that you might traditionally ask in a formal wedding consultation, but you set it up in an online form to give your clients the time and space and freedom at their own schedule. And you can cut customize this design form so that you know you're gathering the information that's relevant to you and how you like to manage clients through your planning process. But it's going to include some very specific questions like how many people are coming to your wedding? Do you know the table configuration? What are you envisioning for your ceremony? What are you envisioning in terms of accessories for the rest of the family and personals and buttonholes and flower crowns? And all of those questions that we traditionally will ask at a formal face-to-face -face wedding consultation but giving your clients the freedom to be able to fill this information in their own time is so beneficial because you have to remember, they are balancing all of the demands of their own life. And in many cases, they're working jobs and they're dealing with their family and they're trying to plan a wedding, which is a whole other full-time job in itself. So this idea of really seeing it as a benefit to your client's freedom and them being able to fill it out at 11 o'clock on a Monday night, if that's when they wanna fill it out, is so helpful so that you don't have to waste your time and more importantly you don't have to waste your clients time in trying to find a time in your calendar that suits everybody because one of the things that I noticed very early on is that when you're doing weddings most of the time you're working your butt off on a Friday and Saturday however that's when your clients want to come down and sit down and have a consultation so I came in and just created a whole different system and said you know what there are so many amazing platforms out there for us as business owners to dive into and to use and many of them are awesome and they might be free so it's so helpful to really think about the system and the process that you're getting your clients to go through because it could be so much more helpful to you in simplifying your process and even better to free up your clients time which is absolutely a win-win by the way if you are enjoying these tips so far be sure to hit the like button so i know 
And step number five is your budget recommendation. So based on the information that they've supplied through the online design Q&A, you are going to send them back a very simple email. Again, this isn't any sort of fancy PDF. This isn't an epic proposal. This is just a very simple, well laid out, professional looking email. And you're going to keep it as simple as possible so that A, it's easy for your clients to understand and B, it's easy for you to pull the information together and send it over to your client as quickly as possible. That speed of response is the thing that will separate you from the other florists in your area. And it's one of the fastest ways to build trust with your customers. So that email is going to include two things. One, it's going to include the high level summary of the budget recommendation or the total budget required in order for you to fulfill your client's wish list. The second thing it's going to include is your personal recommendation in terms of how they actually allocate the budget that they have. One of the things I wish I had known earlier on is that the reason it's called a wish list is because not everything that your client is wishing for at their wedding can happen with their set budget. But it's so helpful for you as a professional floral designer to be courageous enough to be like, hey, so here's the budget that you have. This is how I would recommend that you allocate it. Make it clear in terms of what you think it's okay that they leave off the table and make it clear in terms of where you think their money is best spent. There is no need at this point to get into details about specific flowers. There's definitely no need to get into too much nuance or too much subtlety. Leave all of that till after they make their initial Initial payment and you can sit down with them and go through all of the beautiful fun stuff in a pre-production meeting much closer to the big day. Again, this is just a very simple, well-formatted, professional-looking email that you might include a handful of cute little emojis just to really make emphasis of specific points. But the whole point of this email is to answer your client's number one burning question. What will my budget get me. That one question is like the obstacle in order to get the client booking. The simpler you can make it for your clients to understand and the easier it is for you to pull that together in a professional looking way, the faster you can move through your inquiry process and the way less you will ever worry about not hearing back from clients because you're not investing or wasting hours on these fancy proposals or putting together these epic mood boards when at the end of the day the only question your client asks right now but they don't have the courage to actually ask you is what will my budget get me? So be the florist that gets back to them quickly and answers that question as succinctly and professionally as possible and you will see such a dramatic difference in terms of how you're able to navigate all of your wedding inquiries and wasting way less time on each one. One thing I will throw in here as well and a big mistake I made early on was thinking I had to make the client's wish list fit their budget. So then I was making sacrifices all over the place in terms of over investing in product, not using the kinds of ingredients that I knew would look good and just really not being happy with the end results. So remember as well that when you put that budget recommendation together, this is based on your expert opinion of what's going to look good. So that means you're using the kinds of ingredients that you know look the best and you're using the number of ingredients that you know are going to make the impact that they're looking for. Step number six, finalize the scope of work. Inevitably, after you send over that first budget recommendation, there will always be a little bit of back and forth. The goal though is to make that back and forth as effortless for you and for the client as possible. So in my experience, that's most often gonna be one or two emails. It might be a quick phone call, but this isn't about having some sort of like onerous, you need to do a lot of work, you need to pour a lot of energy into the process of being able to book the client. This is really about making sure that you give them the opportunity and have those points of clarification to make sure that you're both on the same page. And then you're going to move on to step seven when you hear the magic words. Only when you hear your client say, how do I go about booking you in? Do you then sit down and do the paperwork involved with getting that booking formalized? So this is the magic moment when I will sit down and prepare the actual terms and conditions and the contract. I will go through the process of creating a formal quote so that we're clear on the scope of work. And I do create a very simple mood board that's as much about painting the 
vision for myself as it is about reminding me of what we talked about through this process. One of the things that I really struggled with when we started to take on more and more clients was lots of confusion in my own brain in terms of what my vision was for the big day with this client versus what my vision was for the big day with that client. So I actually created a very simple process. I simply just use Pinterest to compile a collage of six to eight images that I do actually link on our quote but this isn't necessarily something that I go over with the client with in the beginning. This is more of a resource for myself so that I remember what I was thinking <laughs> when we were going through this process. Particularly if you're booking clients with multiple months lead time, or if you're running a business that has multiple bookings on the weekend, it's so easy for us to forget the things that we got really excited about. So that's how I like to create a mood board and I do just keep it really simple. I keep it on Pinterest and I do just link it in the quote so that I know what it is that I was thinking about when we were going through this planning process in the early stages of working with a new client. So step number eight is sitting down and doing up the formal contract, the detailed quote. And if you're the kind of designer that likes to do any sort of visual guide or mood board, this is when I would suggest that you do it. In many cases, you will hear other floral designers talk about this as doing admin in their business. I like just referring to it as running a legitimate business. So the whole purpose of the contract is to have complete clarity in terms of the terms of the relationship with your client. I know many floors come at contracts from a space of total intimidation and like fear, but I promise you contracts and terms and conditions are there as a tool to help communicate the standard of this relationship. You are going into a binding agreement with your client and there are expectations in terms of what your client is required to do. And then there are expectations in terms of what your business is trying to do. I will link down below a free copy of our event terms and conditions. So feel free to know that you can copy and paste as much of that as you like, but it is absolutely so incredibly helpful for you to find a local solicitor or a local lawyer that understands the laws in your state and in your country so that you can feel completely empowered in terms of how you run your business. In addition to the terms and conditions, I do like to put together a much more detailed quote. Again, this is as much to confirm to the client that we understand the number of bridesmaids and the number of boutonnieres that we need to create, but a little pro tip, the reason I put quite a bit of detail into the quote is so that I will remember what we talked about. <laughs> One of the things I've noticed just about how my brain works is that we move at a mile a minute and I'll like have all these different piles of notes and I'll be like, I swear I wrote that on a sticky note. Like I literally used to have like my client planning process used to be like layers of pieces of paper and sticky notes and sketches and random conversations that we had and a quote. And then I realized, hey, what if I use the quote as a place that I could document for myself the things that we talked about. And the idea of really actually going through the detail of whatever it is that you know. If you know when the ceremony is scheduled to start, if you know when the bump out's happening for the reception, don't hesitate to include those things on the quote so that when you get into planning all the details and talking with your clients about flowers and specific color palettes and the color story that you wanna go through in terms of the whole event, you are starting from a place of remembering and having the tools in front of you to remember what it is you talked about oh so many months ago. So the detail on that quote is yes, there to confirm with your client, this is what we agreed, this is what we talked about, but I like to use it even more so for myself to have that refresher so that in six months, eight months, 10 months time, I can be like, oh yeah, that's what we talked about. And then the third thing is a mood board. And as I mentioned before, I do keep the mood board incredibly simple. For me, this is as much about setting the tone or the overall vibe for the day. And if there are some specific things that I had in mind in terms of what I wanted to talk through at our pre-production meetings, I will include links to those on this Pinterest board. But this is just as much about going, this is the overall feeling of the day. And this isn't necessarily committing to specific flowers or specific designs or installations or formats or any of that stuff because I leave all of that stuff to a pre-production meeting a few months before the big day. Step number nine, the formalities are completed. So that means that the client has officially signed your terms and conditions or your formal contract. And this is one of those places where investing in a CRM system like Dubsado or HoneyBook is incredibly helpful. Again, you don't necessarily need to invest in that type of software to get your business started or to get it off the ground. But when we made the decision to invest in Dubsado, it was so helpful because it just kept all of our client inquiries in one place. And it makes the process of being able to sign the terms and conditions. It's all hosted online. It's all digital 
digital signatures and you have evidence of the fact that they have agreed to and it is time stamped if you ever need it. So in this step nine, you're also going to clearly communicate to your client how you're going to accept payment. This is going to be based on the structure and systems that you have in your business, but making sure that that piece of information, that that detail is formally communicated to your clients and it's easy for them to understand how they make that initial payment to formalize the actual bookings. And finally, step 10 initial payment is received. Only after the client has actually paid and you can see in your bank account that initial 25% payment is the client actually locked in for the big day. When you see that that money has landed in your bank account, then you can send over the official confirmations, the congratulations email, and whatever it is to kind of celebrate with your clients the fact that they have booked you in, you are secured for the big day, you can mark out your calendar, plan your schedule, and really start to sigh that big sigh of relief in terms of actually having done the work to get the booking. Now, I know you're gonna ask, Kathleen, when do you actually talk about what's in season during their wedding or what flowers you're gonna include or get into the overall color story or the theme of what's happening on the big day? Great question. One of the things that we learned through our business is to save all of the fun details, all of that fun discussion for a pre-production meeting with your clients in the months leading up to their wedding. For me, I like to do this pre-production meeting in person, face to face. I do like to have like all the stakeholders around the table. So if you know that mom or mother-in-law or Aunt Betty needs to be part of the discussion to just help manage expectations, don't hesitate to invite them. But I love talking through all those fun details and kind of turning into a little bit of a party, a little bit of a celebration. And I know for us, our clients would book us in so many months in advance and then they'd go through the process and start to realize that they wanted to change their mind, make a few other decisions, they came up with new ideas and that was totally fine. And I gave them permission. After I confirmed that they had booked us in and we have received their initial payment, I literally would say to them, hey, you know what? Let's go ahead and book in this pre-production, pre-planning meeting for two months before the big day. And I wanna give you full permission to not worry about a thing. You don't have to keep me updated on any changes or any updates that are being made. And save all the fun details, all of the indecision, and all of the changing my mind about all of the details that every single one of our clients goes through. Save all of that discussion for the sit-down meeting in the lead-up to the big day. And just give your clients the peace of mind to know, you know what, this is the general scope of work, this is what we've agreed to, these are the items that we know right now, permission granted to change your mind within this scope of work. They have the peace of mind of knowing that you and your team are reserved for the big day, which is the most important piece of the puzzle. And I do hope that walking through this 10-step process for how we navigate wedding inquiries has been helpful for you and your business and if you're somebody who wants to learn even more about how to run a successful six-figure flower business, then you need to check out this video. I'm sharing five pro tips to help you streamline your approach to creating personal so that you don't have to stay up super late the night before the wedding like I did for so many years and finally start making the kind of work you've always dreamed of. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.